Welcome. In the previous episode, we discussed regarding the classification of the tissue system, the epidermal tissue system, the ground tissue system and the vascular tissue system. We also discussed regarding the anatomy of dicot root, the anatomy of monocot root, the anatomy of dicot stem, anatomy of monocot stem and the characteristics exhibited by the dorsiventral and isobilateral leaves. In this episode, I will be stressing on the secondary growth of the plant which is the characteristics of the angiospermic plants mainly of the dicot stem and dicot root. The growth of the roots and stems in the length with the help of apical meristem is called the primary growth. Now what is secondary growth? It is the increase in girth. The tissues involved in secondary growth are the lateral meristem, the vascular cambium and the cork cambium. The vascular cambium is the meristematic layer responsible for cutting off vascular tissues that is the xylem and phloem. The formation of cambial ring. In dicot stems we find the intrafascicular cambium which are actually the cells of cambium present between primary xylem and primary phloem. Medullary cells adjoining these intrafascicular cambium become meristematic and form the interfascicular cambium which is the continuous ring of cambia. Regarding the activity of the cambium ring, the secondary xylem is actually the cells which are cut off towards the pith. The cells which are cut off towards periphery they are called as the secondary phloem. The cambium is more active on the inner side and so the production of secondary xylem is more than the secondary phloem. It is because of the growth of the secondary xylem that these primary and secondary phloem they get crushed. Cambium forms a narrow band of parenchyma which passes through the secondary xylem and the secondary phloem in radial directions. These are the secondary medullary rays. The activity of cambium is under the control of physiological and environmental factors and basing on this the woods are named accordingly. The spring wood. It is generally found in the spring season where the cambium is very active and it produces large number of xylary elements. It is also known as the early wood. The autumn wood is also called the late wood which generally develops in the winter season where the cambium is less active and produces less number of xylary elements. The heartwood comprises of dead elements with highly lignified walls which is generally found in old trees. The peripheral region of secondary xylem is lighter in color and is involved in conduction of water and minerals which is known as the sap wood. Cork cambium plays a very important role in the secondary growth. As the stem increases in girth, another meristematic tissue called cork cambium or phylogen develops in the cortex region. The phylogen cuts off cells on both sides. The outer cells they are known as the phelum, which is the cork. The inner cells they are the phelloderm, which is the secondary cortex. Thus, we can say that phylogen plus phelum plus phalloderm is equal to periderm or periderm constitutes phalogen, phalum and phalloderm. The bark is the periderm and secondary phloem. The bark may be early or soft bark which is formed early in the season. It may be late or hard bark when it is formed at the end of the season. In woody trees, the epidermis ruptures forming lens shaped openings called lenticels which is responsible for the exchange of gases between the outer atmosphere and internal tissue of the stem. Now secondary growth is also found in roots. In the dicot root 
the vascular cambium is completely secondary in origin and the vascular cambium forms a continuous wavy ring which later becomes circular. The other characteristics of the dicot root is similar to the dicot stem. Let us have a quick recap of the portions we studied. The secondary growth which involves the vascular cambium, the formation of cambial ring, the activity of cambium ring, the spring wood, autumn wood, heart wood, sap wood, cork cambium, the bark and the secondary growth in roots. In this chapter, we refer to the anatomy of flowering plants. At the beginning, I had told you that anatomy means the study of the internal structure. Cell is the basic unit of life wherein these cells, they form the tissues. So, we have seen that how the tissue, the tissue system in the plant help in performing various different functions. The increase in the girth of the plant is because of the secondary growth. We find that in the flowering plants, that is the angiosperms, the dicots and the monocots also vary in the internal structure. So, we can do a comparison between the morphology and the anatomy. Morphology is the study of the external structure of the plants, whereas anatomy is the study of the internal structure of the plant, the tissues, the tissue system, the anatomy of the stem, the anatomy of the root and how they develop into a huge tree. I will continue with this unit, structural organization in plants and animals with a new chapter in the next episode. Music